Today, we're going to show you how to get rid of your skin tags and warts very quickly. Okay. Now, many times it'll go away over overnight or in a few days, or it may, in certain circumstances, take up to two weeks to fully get rid of them. But during this process, you're going to find a lessening of these skin tags the longer you do this. Now, getting rid of these skin tags are actually very easy to do, and it's a simple two ingredient remedy. Okay. But more importantly, is to understand why you have skin tags or warts in the first place. A skin tag or a wart is an indicator. It's your body's way of communicating that there's something else going on that you should uh, pay attention to. So the purpose of this video is to really understand the why behind the symptom. So not only can you get rid of it, but to make sure it doesn't come back because there are other problems that are probably existing right now in your body that are related to this underlying cause. So first of all, what do we know about skin tags or warts? Well, we know we have a growth of cells. And the term for that is an anabolic response, okay? Anabolic means the growth of something. It's actually a mini little tumor. It's a benign tumor. Benign tumors are not cancer. Cancer involves something called a malignancy, which it's spreading out of control. So a benign tumor happens at a very certain location and it gets to a certain size, but it doesn't take over the body. And these skin tags usually are on the uh, folds of your skin, uh, on your neck, armpit, um, but there can be anywhere as well. They can be in your mouth, your esophagus, the trachea, the larynx, uh, your private parts, your groin, they can be all over. Now there is a high association between skin tags and warts and HPV human papilloma virus. You have to realize that HPV are not just one virus. It's over like 130 or 140 different types of human papilloma viruses. So each one can create different situations. All right. So what else do we know about a skin tag? Well, definitely more common in women. So why is that? What's the difference between men and women? Well, women have more estrogen for one thing. And also you see a higher incidence of uh, skin tags when a woman gets pregnant, which would also validate this estrogen situation. And also estrogen is an anabolic hormone. So it, it makes cells grow. And the more fat that you have, the more estrogen you're going to make. So if someone is overweight, they're going to make more estrogen, both men and women. And the last point about estrogen is that not only is there a high risk factor for getting skin tags, there's a higher risk factor of just having HPV and HPV-related cancers, okay? So there's that connection as well. But there's another interesting piece of information relating to these skin tags, and that would be increased risk of skin tags in conditions like diabetes, obesity, and PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is really related to the underlying cause of diabetes, and obesity, which is high levels of insulin, okay? But under that is insulin resistance. Now, one study they did with uh, 98 cases of, of people with skin tags, nearly all of them had insulin resistance, okay? Based on a test called HOMA IR, and I'll put that study down below. And so they found a very, very strong association between skin tags and insulin resistance, skin tags and high triglycerides, and skin tags and obesity, which basically high triglycerides and obesity are related to insulin resistance as well. Now, another thing that's interesting about insulin resistance, where you have a situation where you have a lot of insulin in the body that's compensating for this insulin resistance in the cell. So when insulin is supposed to penetrate the mitochondria, the energy factory of the cell to make ATP, which is energy, it doesn't do it to the degree it should. So then the body's it's these, this feedback loop and it starts making a lot of insulin, but it's not connecting with the mitochondria. And when you don't have enough insulin connecting with the mitochondria, you get lower numbers of mitochondria. You get dysfunctional mitochondria, which is at the heart of both cancer and benign tumors, which are skin tags. So I believe that's the biggest mechanism of why people get skin tags, okay? It's, it has to do with what's going on at the mitochondrial level. So I'm gonna to get to the remedy next, but I just wanna emphasize the importance 
of understanding the mechanism behind skin tags and what you need to do about it. You need to fix insulin resistance, okay, as well as estrogen dominance if you have that problem. But chances are it's going to be more of an insulin resistance problem. And the solution for that is definitely getting on the healthy version of the ketogenic diet as well as intermittent fasting to make sure that after you get rid of these skin tags, they don't come back. All right, now let's talk about the remedy. It's really, really simple. You're just going to be using two things, iodine and garlic. What's interesting about iodine is not only can it inhibit HPV, but it also can help regulate estrogen. And I'm going to recommend a type of iodine that you can get at the uh, pharmacy, drugstore. It's called povidone iodine. It's less toxic and it's very soluble, okay? And they use it even to treat burns. So you're going to use that. You're just going to use a few drops. You're going to get a little container, a little dish, put two drops of this iodine in it, okay, each day. And then you're going to take some fresh garlic and crush a little bit of it to get a couple drops, okay? So we're going to mix a couple drops of garlic with the iodine together, okay? You're going to mix it up and then you're going to take a little uh, cotton swab, put it directly on the skin tag or wart and put a band-aid or tape over it, okay? And you're going to apply that same mixture just twice a day. Now, I'm going to recommend that you keep it in the refrigerator just to keep the, uh, the garlic really fresh. You don't have to worry about the iodine, but the garlic needs to stay fresh and potent because there's a certain phytonutrient called allicin in the garlic that is doing all the magic. And so it's very anti-cancer, it's antiviral, it does a lot. Now, you're going to notice after even a day of using this that there's a significant shrinkage of the skin tag, if not completely gone. It really depends on how bad you have insulin resistance, okay? It could take up to two weeks, but you will see a lessening of the skin tag over time. Now, the next day, I recommend that you toss out the dish that you made the previous day and make a, a fresh batch. A couple drops of iodine, a couple drops of the garlic uh, juice, fresh, because that way we can maintain the potency of the garlic, okay? And you can just cut up this garlic clove and just crush different uh, pieces of it each day and it'll, it'll go a long way, but we want that garlic fresh and uh, we're going to, we're going to put it on the area topically, put a little bandaid or a piece of tape, and you're just going to keep repeating this, applying it to uh, the surface of your skin for up to two weeks, if you need it for that long. And you can also use other things too. Other things will work like zinc oxide, uh, apple cider vinegar might work, oregano oil will work, but I think you're going to see the best results with garlic and this iodine. Now, a war is also caused by a human papillomavirus, and you may need to shift to a, a slightly different remedy if needed, maybe not. But let's say um, the first remedy doesn't work, or you don't see any change within one week, then shift to this other remedy, which is either one of two things. You can use uh, salicylic acid, you can get it from the drugstore in little patches, or just crush an aspirin up and put some of this aspirin topically within some water with a band-aid or a tape and apply that, that will tend to work. Or there's an ancient plant you can get as a remedy um, and it's called, called celandine, okay? I mean, if you had it fresh, that would be the ideal situation because you just take um, one of the stems and you'll notice that there's this oozing fluid out of the stem. You would put that topically. It's very, very potent to viruses and you put just a little drop on that, put a band-aid and or tape. But the most important thing about this video and the emphasis is to correct the underlying reason why you have these in the first place. And I highly recommend you get started on this right now while it's fresh in your mind. So I put the first video up on this playlist right here. Check it out.